Peace be to you, the reader. Let us arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. At that time they were bringing infants to Jesus that he might touch them and when the disciples saw it they rebuked them but Jesus called to them saying let the children come to me and do not hinder them for to such belongs the kingdom of God truly I say to you whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it and his disciples said to him then who can be saved but Jesus said what is possible with men what is impossible with men is possible with God and Peter said, Lo, we have left our homes, and we have followed you. And Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no man who has left house, or parents, or brothers, or wife, or children, for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not receive manifold more in this time, and in the age to come eternal life. Spirit, amen. amen. Good evening. Good evening, Father. I'm going to break my rule, which is, I mean, it's almost inviolable, which is you only, you only preach on the reading of the day, on the gospel. But I'm going to break the rule today because it's Thanksgiving tomorrow. And, but Thanksgiving, of course, is a very dominant theme in the Christian life. And it's really good we're here tonight. You might have read this in the newsletter because we sanctify the day. Now, Thanksgiving is not an Orthodox holiday, but it is an, an American civic holiday that has its roots in the founding faith of America. And we should affirm that. The Orthodox debate this. They debate this. They say, well, it's not really an Orthodox holiday, so don't make anything special of it. And, yeah, I know. I agree. This is Orthodox. It doesn't make any sense. Why? Because the Orthodox understand I always go back to what's called the Orthodox Missionary Imperative. One of the reasons the Orthodox have been successful historically in their mission programs is they never go in and try and make the people something they're not. They don't. What they do, and this takes a lot of study and planning and preparation, is they learn the culture. And sometimes they take years, seven to ten years, studying this and, and preparing for this. They learn the culture into which, is, in which, which they plan to missionize, and they try and comprehend what is already true. So instead of going in and saying, you've got to change everything and you've got to believe like us, they go in slowly, they go in knowledge, knowledgeably, and they affirm the truth that is already there, and they expand it. And that's what we do with Thanksgiving. Because the fundamental impulse and, and, and purpose and motivation for Thanksgiving is thoroughly orthodox. That is to give thanks to God for his protection and his bounty. And that's what the early settlers did. They came here, they came here with the deep consciousness of God. Maybe thought about it a little differently than, than we might, but it was still Christian. And what is true in what they believe and what they practice is also good and worth valuing because the truth is, by definition, good and valuable. And so that tradition now, it became a national holiday somewhere along the line, but it was something that people did and it became a, a, an, identifying, an identifying characteristic of American civil, civic culture that recalled its Christian past. And that's why we're here tonight. Because it's good to affirm it. 
Because why? Because it's good to give thanks to God. And we understand that when it started, that was pre precisely the motivation and intent and the purpose for doing it. It tells us something about the character of the early people, but it also exhorts us to follow in that, their example. Their lives were much harder than ours, just was. They came into what was for them a wilderness and they eked out a living. And they were successful. They were successful, but not without great hardship. A lot of sickness and a lot of death. But they gave thanks to God. They gave thanks to God. And that's the key. And that is what has been preserved over these last 200 years. Giving thanks to God is like an antidote for a lot that ails you. And do you know that gratitude is the antidote for greed? St. John Chrysostom says that. Somebody having trouble with greed, that might be his vice that he really struggles against. Be grateful. Start being grateful. Start seeing the good that God has given you. And you know what? The, the, the compulsivity that underlies greed starts to dissolve. Having a hard time, and it seems like the world is falling down around you, and you've lost a lot. You haven't lost anything. You haven't lost everything. You have lost some things. Loss is real. But there's also good, and there's also plenty in corners that we don't see until we open our eyes. Loss, a lot of times, you know what it does? It opens our our awareness to, to, to what's really important. And what's really important a lot of times are the things that are overlooked. They're overlooked. But once we begin to open our eyes and we give gratitude to God for the small things, we begin to see and sense and understand that those small things are indeed very important as well. Gratitude, gratitude is the, the willful turning of the heart, the intentional turning of the heart to seeing the good that is in life and giving thanks to God for it. And it's tremendously therapeutic. It's tremendously beneficial. We don't do it only for its therapeutic value. We do it because it's true. Because it's true. Because